today for inspiring ideas for the classroom. We are excited to um, have Tammy Hicks. Tammy is the Director of Professional Learning for the Wabash Valley Educational Center. So thanks for taking time to join us today, Tammy. Absolutely, thanks for inviting me. Now, we were talking before we started recording about all the really awesome things that both that you are doing there and you're doing at Wabash Valley. Uh, the other people are also helping with, but um, it's the the working with the ELL teachers, making sure that we stay connected with those students. One of the things you mentioned is the Padlet, and so it's now you're going to show us uh, how it works. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we have had a lot of questions coming from our schools about how to engage our English learners in a virtual environment and remotely as well as how do you utilize um, all of the teachers that always were there to support the students in person. And one of those groups that was always there, um, that was such a valuable component of those, the English learners um, education when they were in the buildings were the instructional aids. And so one of the questions was, now what, how can we continue learning and professional learning for instructional aids now that they're out of, out of um, the buildings but also how can those instructional aides continue to support the English learners? So uh, we jumped in with a Padlet that was designed really for instructional aides or classroom teachers who had um, uh, EL students in their classroom who were gonna be trying to reach out to those EL students directly. So the first thing that we did with our Padlet for the instructional aides and classroom teachers for English learners was to create a Padlet where they could get in and do some um, personal learning and professional learning wherever they are, whenever it was convenient for them at home. Um, so we created different pathways. These all include um, videos that they can watch at their own leisure and work through. It's a, a, a asynchronous um, kind of a module for professional learning, as well as then each one, we also provide them with some Google slides that have a wealth of resources and then we talk about in each one of these we talk about and give them some strategies for an activity or an idea of how it might be used in the classroom and then here are some online digital resources to also access so that it will support them so that they have the resources in hand um, we extended that just a little bit and then moved into digital resources for EL students, because a lot of them were just not sure what kind of resources would be good resources for their English learners. So we tried to break them down into their categories. For example, we have um, a category on language development and support. So there's a visual online um, category. There's other different things in here of different online visual auditory um, dictionaries that are good use for students. This is one that's just very particular to uh, math visual manipulatives. Um, there's just a lot in here. And then we broke it down into reading resources. So um, we also went in and that some of the different uh, major productions um, and publications are offering some free things for teachers. So we've been upgrading and updating this as um, different free things are offered. This new level is really good for English learners because it provides updated current events for English learners in multiple English learner levels. So versus a reading level, this is around their language level. Um, and we've done this for writing, math, and then some integrated lessons. Um, one of the things I'm doing as well is getting uh, trained through the State Department as a STEM PBL trainer. So I've been trying to um, support teachers and in thinking about integrating a lot of that content for, for students and providing it more in a project-based or a problem-based kind of a learning environment for them. So that I added a few ideas as well as some lessons to give them some ideas how they might do that. And then we provided some office hours for teachers and we'll continue to do that through our center to just talk and collaborate and brainstorm um, just some of the really good activities like using Padlets for students or Flipgrid or something else for students. So we've been working hard. We do know that our instructional aides are working really hard with our families. So they're, work, they're meeting with individual EL families and using these resources as well to support individual English learners, almost like in their tutoring 
sessions, but now they're doing it using um, other tools on, virtually. Oh, I like that. And it, as we, you had mentioned here before we started recording it, that a lot of schools for the instructional aides, paraprofessionals, now is uh, it's hard for them to get professional development during the school year usually because they're like one of the most used resources in the school, I think. But uh, now would be a, a probably a, a good time for them to be able to pick up more um, professional development to help them in their positions too. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that we're working hard on right now because of that. They are such a critical part of the school building. They, they play very, many, many multiple roles. And so it's very difficult to get them out during the year. But we have a lot of instructional aides that are always interested in continuing their learning and want to get better and continue to improve. So this has been a nice opportunity, if you look at a silver lining, for them to be able to engage in some good professional learning um, that might be something that's going to be useful, you know, at their, for them in their role when they return back to the schools. And some of them are finding new roles um, as instructional aides virtually and continuing to, to provide that support for students in a different environment. Wonderful. It, I had not heard of someone doing that, and I really like that as an idea for, I mean, they could have virtual hours or be able to offer extra help uh, yeah. to the uh, that is an awesome idea that I've not heard people doing. I didn't realize people were doing that. I like that. It is, and that's basically how they're doing it. Some of them have assigned, um, right now it's been really around English learners, but they've assigned English learner uh, like some families. So they make phone calls and then they have Zoom, Zoom calls when they are able to, if they're able to connect that way. And they really have become liaisons between um, the schools and, and families, and it's really just been so incredibly valuable, I think, um, in keeping everybody connected and communicating well. So it's been interesting to see how everybody in the building is getting utilized in new and, and creative ways now. Absolutely. Now the Padlet board that you're using, or were you gonna ask something? I thought you paused there, I'm sorry. No, oh, that's, I was, yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll use the, uh, the new social etiquette to pause for a few seconds before you, before you start in with uh, all the video meetings we're having now. Yes. But Padlet, um, it, that's like designed to be like a collaboration for projects generally, right? It, it, to my understanding, that's the only way I've seen it before. Is that? Yes, absolutely. It's a great um, tool for collaborating on projects because even as we're talking to you and Sarah, if I gave you this link, you'd be able to add resources or add your own so that everybody can be adding at the same time. They can create their own uh, categories. You can create a Padlet. Um, if a student were working on um, some kind of a project, one of the things that my students love to do is something called an exploration folder. So they really got to research um, something that was of interest to them in particular. Um, a Padlet's a really great way because they could go out and they could categorize some different areas that they would like to share um, their learning within. And so they could have something that they're researching and they go in and put different categories. It's very user-friendly and easy um, to manipulate as well. So it's something that um, teachers would be able to easily guide students in and being able to add content themselves and collaborate on a project together, which would be a great idea. Yeah, with that, I mean, being a free resource, I to what came to mind right away for me is um, the choice board making this, you know, you know, three yes, point that's a great idea. projects and resources yes, yes. for the separate projects. I, I think this would be, I, I had not seen it in a couple of years, probably Padlet. And so I had not been thinking about that, but that I think would be an excellent way to do these choice boards. That a lot of teachers are starting to put together for their students. Yeah, it sure would. And you know, you can link it right into either a website, but I could link it into a, a Google document or whatever you might have that you want them to access. So it doesn't just have to be a, a website. It would be a great tool for a choice board. Absolutely. And Tammy, if teachers that are interested in the resources that you've developed, how do they 
how do they connect with you to get those? Are those at the Wabash Valley Education site or? Yes, absolutely. They can go on site um, as well. I think that all of mine are also um, public in uh, the Padlet site. So if you search for digital resources for EL students or the EL uh, for the teachers, and I'm happy to um, share my email address or um, they can come on onto our website and they can link straight into it. If they have a t hard time finding it, then they could come straight in and, and link straight in to me and I am happy to share it out as well. That's um, great. And I, I didn't realize Padlet had a, a um, public like sharing site where they could look those up. So that's wonderful if they could get to it from the Padlet site as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm most excited about the Padlet. I mean, I was super excited about the ideas of helping um, the paraprofessionals, the teacher assistant, and engaging them. Because I had not. I mean, we we are putting together a professional development for this fall that includes them. But I didn't think. Well, now's the time that would be great to help them more. So I love that. I certainly love the idea of using Padlet. No one has talked about that. None of our teachers yet. So uh -huh. I, okay, great. Hey, hey, I'm thinking it's like, oh, wow, it's, this is something that my, my wife could use and with collaborating with the other teachers, uh, each Absolutely. unit they want to do, you want to start doing a unit and they have each one, a different one. So the teachers can put their resources together. I, I could see this being a very useful resource to them in multiple ways. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. And we get, you know, it's a, again, yes, it's one of those good tools that have been around for a while and you kind of forget a little bit and then you bring it back up and think, wow, this is a great idea to use right now in this environment that we're learning in right now. So, wonderful. <laughs> what other things um, for EL students? What What are some of the key things that you would suggest if teachers are struggling? What are yeah. some you're you're like, oh, well, you know, these might be really good things to try resources or or that you've um, heard and talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would make sure that, that for, honestly, they went into some of the, the resources, like, for example, the math re resources. There's just some really great math um, tools in there that are designed um, so resources that are just sites designed specifically with creating lessons for English learners. Um, when I think about English learners, you know, engagement is so important and we get them engaged with a lot of visual stimulation. They need some visuals um, to allow that connection to be made through text and, and what they're learning. I um, mean, we can give them a visual that just aids that so much for those, those students to build that comprehension for them. So the more we can put a visual, even in the virtual environment, um, the better um, giving those students opportunities to be able to build language is incredibly important. So using things like Flipgrid where they can actually record a response in and practice recording into the computer is going to be valuable even into the future, because that's honestly the area that our, our English learners in Indiana struggle with most on the WIDA access test, which is basically a language development test for them. They struggle a lot with how to provide how to speak into a computer to illustrate their learning um, with their oral language. So what we're finding is that in an interesting way by utilizing some of the tools virtually, such as um, a Flipgrid, where they have to record an oral response, is they're actually been finding that the kids are starting to build some confidence and skills in doing that oral language pieces that are required of them um, later in the school year when they do um, the WIDA access language development tests in the school. So um, I think that really when we think about English learners, we have to think about providing many opportunities for them to collaborate, for them to build language and to have lots of visuals to stimulate that engagement as well as build comprehension and make those connections with what they're learning. Oh, definitely. It, 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 with all the, I mean, this is important stuff we're talking about, and it's a lot of really, it's, I think you're supplying a lot more than you thought you would in this. But the Flipgrid, let's not gloss over that too quickly, because a, a lot of have, probably haven't used Flipgrid. And so it's like, now what is that? It, you've mentioned it as like a response thing. And so it, do you want to kind of explain what Flipgrid is a little bit so that they're a little better understanding? It's also free. So, um, 
Flipgrid is a, a tool and it you can kind of like I've set up with resources in here, you can set up activities for students to engage in. So they might watch a video. We, we've done some, obviously, um, one of the most important things that our kids are talking about right now have been germs and COVID-19, correct? So we set one up for our kindergarten K through two kids that was just like, Here's a quick little activity. So one of the activities they did was simply putting water in a bowl with some pepper, a lot of pepper. And then they they would dip their fingers in the water. And when they pulled it out, they would see all the pepper would come out on it. And then as they would touch anything else, that pepper would would, would follow it along. And it was a very simple little science experiment that, that was put together just to show them how germs get spread. Then there was a quick little video that we had that we put in there that they could watch. And there were some other activities, some quick little um, articles of text. So all of that goes into Flipgrid. And then at the end of it, it talked about what are some things that you, so when they do the science experiment with the water and the pepper, what did you learn from this? And they just click on it and they talk straight into the, you know, just like you and I are having a conversation but it records their answers. So it makes it much more interactive and it also forces those kids then to provide an oral answer or to engage orally with Flipgrid. Um, it's really been a great tool and that's something else that if you have more questions about, we have some office hours and our innovation specialist has been working with teachers on how to get Flipgrid um, started. So you can look at our uh, website for more information on Flipgrid um, as well. She even did something that was just simple. She did, um, she took emojis and she built a Google Slides from it. And then the kids go in and they take pictures of themselves um, expressing that emotion. And then they wrote about it like today I'm feeling this way. So that was the social and emotional component. And she put that into Flipgrid. And then at the end of the day, they would just do like a verbal, uh, almost like a journal update. Like today, I mostly been feeling excited because I learned this, or it was a little bit of a gloomy day because it was rainy and I spent the day inside. But it was that social emotional piece. So she's actually done a little bit as well with that. Um, Again, just trying to tap in and getting kids engaged um, and building those language skills as well. I love that. Th these are good resources. Thank you very much for sharing these. It's, I think teachers will get a lot of use out of this. Yes. Thank you again. And we, you know, if anybody is interested, they can always just go to our website. It's just Wabash Valley Education Center, um, and you can Google it. And um, we're trying to continue to add resources, just like all of you. And we're really interested in hearing what other creative things schools are doing, just like all of you are. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. An outstanding on review. On iTunes or your preferred podcast player. Tweet us your science questions. At Purdue SOS. Until next time, be super. And remember. You are someone's hero. Boiler up. Hammer.